might have thought it, maybe never said it. But let's be honest, sometimes we can get caught up in the routines that we forget. But have you ever noticed that that's not the case with children? They have an excitement and exhilaration about them, centered on the miracle of Christmas. They're not jaded or calloused or cynical. They approach the manger, it's been said, with wide-eyed wonder and excitement. There's a story about a mother and father who went Christmas shopping one Saturday afternoon with their seven-year-old daughter. The little girl was so thrilled about Christmas and so happy and so enthusiastic, so alive to the season. But her parents were just the opposite. They were grumpy and grouchy and tense and uptight. So worn out with the traffic jams in the malls and the traffic jams out on the road. The little girl in the midst of all of it was just singing Christmas carols and as happy as could be. While her mother and father were cross and they were snapping at each other. Finally, the father in an agitated tone told the little girl to stop that singing. I just don't want to go to bed. The little girl started upstairs to her room but stopped on the stairway, opened the window, and looked out. Why did you open the window and let in the cold air? Her dad asked her. Because I thought I heard the angels sing. Because I thought I heard the angels sing. Still angry and tired, the father said, I don't hear any angels singing, and neither do you. Now go upstairs and get in the bed right now. The little girl started upstairs, but then paused and said gently, Daddy, if you want to hear the angels sing, you have to listen to your heart. You have to listen to your heart. And then gave her father a hug and proceeded up the bed. If you want to hear the angels sing, you have to stop and you have to listen with your heart. Is it any wonder that Jesus said, truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. I have to share with you that so often it's very easy and I have a feeling that Pastor Jim and Pastor Jim can attest to this. As a pastor, you can get so caught up in the routine of what has to be done, the bulletins, the services, the candles, all the things that need to be put in a row. That you can miss it. You can miss what the season is about. And yeah, you can even get into that trap of be so glad when it's over that we can catch our breath. When I found myself at times in those moments, I've had to say, God, forgive me. Because this is not what it's about. That's stuff that needs to be done. But it's not what it's about. We need to be careful that we don't get so caught up in our preparations and our traditions and it's not that there's anything wrong with those but if we let them draw ourselves away from the main thing and what Christmas and Thanksgiving and what just praising God is about we need to be careful we can have frequent flyer syndrome with our loved ones how many times have we gotten caught so, so caught up so much with what needs to be done at our jobs at school, with our children, with our schedules in general, that we allow these things to come before our loved ones? Or how often do we seek to bring happiness into the lives of those that are closest to us through 
gifts and the like, but the thing that they want more than anything else is the gift of us. Giving a gift is easy. Giving ourselves is not always as easy. The problem is, is that if we're not careful, we can wait so long. But sometimes we either almost miss or we do miss the opportunity to really let those closest to us know just how much we care and how much we love them. We need to make sure that we always take the time. We really do. My dad passed a little over nine years ago. We always hugged each other and kissed one another and said goodbye when it was time to go home. And I still remember vividly that last visit. And I thought it was kind of strange, but we hugged and kissed and my dad came up and hugged me again and kissed me a second. He said, I love you. Less than a month and a half later, he was gone. Little did I know that that was the last time. I thank God for that moment because it was an opportunity to love you to each other. As I think back, that could have been a very real opportunity missed. By simply saying, come on, Dad, i got to get out of here. i got plenty to catch. <clears throat> and sometimes it just takes a moment. We live in a day and time, my friends, when relationships suffer because time and effort is not taken or put forth to build those relationships in such a way that they remain healthy and growing. <coughs> I am certainly not perfect at doing that. The frequent flyer syndrome in our relationships will rob us every time if we're not careful of the joy and the fulfillment that can be ours if we really invest ourselves in the lives of those who are closest to us. But it doesn't just stop there. We can have frequent flyer syndrome with just people in general. Sometimes we miss out not only on the relationships of those closest to us, but also we miss the opportunity of interacting with God's people in general. How many times does God open up doors or windows of opportunity for us to invest or to interact with people? Only for us to turn our backs on them. I just don't have time. Or I don't want to invest myself in one more person. we're not careful, we can become so callous to those around us that we do not see them, we do not hear them, or even sense their presence. They become to us our invisible gorillas. You'll note that Jesus was always keenly aware of those around him. He never missed a beat with anyone. And he calls us as his followers to do the same. And then finally, we can have frequent flyer syndrome with God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Dr. Eddie Fox was once sharing about some of the amazing things that were happening in the former Soviet Union. He was sharing at the time how many people there were under communist rule for so many years and now were free to worship God as they chose and how new churches were popping up all over the place. He described how thrilling it was to see people hungrily coming to God and how excited and exhilarated and beautifully childlike they were in their faith and in their commitment. At the event in which he was sharing was a minister from Estonia by the name of Olaf. Olaf came forward to speak, and as he did, the master of ceremony said, Before Olaf speaks, I want to lead us in prayer. 
And then he proceeded to place his hand on Olaf's shoulder and to pray a simple prayer. He thanked God for Olaf and his ministry and for the general things happening in the churches in Estonia. And then he thanked God for sending Jesus Christ into the world to be our Savior. Dr. Fox shared that when the prayer was concluded and he opened his eyes, he was deeply touched by what he observed. He said Olaf was standing there right in front of him with big tears of joy just streaming down his cheeks. And Avox said God was there. He went on to say that for the rest of them in the room it had been just a routine prayer. But not for Olaf. Olaf was moved to tears of both joy and gratitude by the very thought of Jesus Christ, his Savior and his Lord. The very thought of Jesus Christ coming into this world to save us moved him to tears. How long has it been since you were moved like that? How long has it been since you've had a, a spiritual experience that touched you so powerfully, so profoundly that you were moved to tears of joy and appreciation for what God has done for you in and through His Son, Jesus Christ? You see, my friends, if we're not careful, we can get caught in the frequent fire syndrome that causes us to focus on anything and everything but Jesus. We can become so numb to going through the motions of our faith and the living out of that faith that it just becomes another day's routine along with brushing our teeth and everything else. When was the last time we got excited about spending a little time with Jesus? Instead of it just being one more thing, I've got to check off my list because it's something I need to do. The call for us this Thanksgiving and for the upcoming Christmas season and actually every day is to seize the moments, to celebrate the miracles, to feel the joy, to give thanks for the blessings that are ours. And I pray that we don't ever, ever, ever get caught in the frequent flyer syndrome. Remember, if you want to hear the angels say, you have to be aware of we have to be with your hearts. We pray with you. We do thank you, O oh God, for so many blessings that are ours. We could never even begin to list them. O oh God, if we have been lax in giving you thanks, we pray for you. We pray, O oh God, that you would save us from frequent flyer syndrome, especially in our spiritual lives and in our relationship with you. Help us, we pray, to see you in everything that we are about, every day of our lives, in your creation, in each other, in the things that we read, the things that we hear, the things that we experience. Help us, we pray, to open our hearts that we might hear the angels and that we might recognize and acknowledge the blessings of the Lord. Give it to us at your hand. We ask these things in Jesus' name.